Hi everybody. Since my last video, the, uh, the little um, comparison video between the Gokis 5 and the Gokis 3 was uh, very well appreciated. Uh, I decided to make a little manual walkthrough video, uh, something I always like to see myself. I've zoomed in on the screen and only the, the main uh, control knobs uh, because I figure most people will uh, watch this through their phones and uh, the screen is already tiny enough so uh, you can probably just see it to your uh, on your screen of your phone. I will first start with the main menu button. You can see me press it, but oh, you can actually. Uh, system. And when I go there, there I have general, input, EQ, Bluetooth, and a lot. I will go to general and I will walk through everything. Auto off, you can choose between 20 minutes and 240 minutes, which is quite a difference, but okay, hey, why not? LCD contrast, I've cranked it up a bit so the camera can uh, see it, but uh, normally I have it on four. Then uh, on the angle I play, I can view it nicely. Key touch, quite a lot to choose fixed. And uh, here under, you see, you can uh, choose the fixed value of the velocity. Fixed light, and it goes up to extra heavy nine. So I put it back where it was. And then when I press enter again, I can uh, go on. Fixed velocity, I just set that. Batteries, nickel, metal, or alkaline, alkaline, I don't know. I never said it in English. Master tuning, scene number. And this is the actually the scene you choose it will boot up with. I will talk about scenes later. Home display, which is nice. You can choose what it uh, looks like and what information it gives. You see, here you see what scene it has. And here you can see, uh, actually I don't know, oh, he did the lower program probably, I don't know, oh, I screwed up a bit. Type 4 is this one, we have not uh, the keyboard indicator and type 5, so you can choose what you want to see. And I have used some, but actually one was in fact the nicest for me. Transmit channel for the USB MIDI, goes all the way up to from 1 to 16 or off. And local control of the keyboard. Speaker switch is actually quite nice. You can choose the speakers on off. So if you, uh, con if you uh, connect the five with the mains out, uh, you can still have the, uh, the speakers on. They will always mute when you connect the headphones. The hold polarity of your uh, hold pedal and the control pedal and that's it for this one oh. and so we go to system again to input the volume of the bluetooth input and the actually aux jack you have on the five usb audio volume in microsoft Microsoft microphone volume, microphone gain, and actually the separate microphone gain, if you uh, uh, connect a headset with a built-in microphone, you can do that also. I, yeah, I don't know how to go back. When I go back, I, I press exit, and oh, now I go back one. EQ, here you can switch EQ on and off, and you can switch the gains, the frequencies, and how much you affect those frequencies bluetooth pairing if i go if i press i go to pairing mode and then i can actually pair um, like uh, audio or midi i can switch it on or off and the idea should you have two identical uh, machines you can give them a separate id it goes up to whoa a lot okay so you can actually use a lot of these boards together should you wish to and that's it for this menu this is uh, again in the same menu center cancellation sort of uh, primitive voice cancellation uh, for the inputs utility here i can do a factory reset and i can choose what to reset 
I can delete content and I can choose what content to delete. I can make a backup to the USB stick. I can restore from the USB stick. I can export scenes and chord patterns. You cannot export patches, which is a shame, but okay. You can import scenes, chord patterns, styles, tones, and the five can, uh, drums. Yes. Um, hold that thought because the five can import wave expansions. And this is not here, but I would expect it, but it's here. And if I say install, I can just pick one, shoot I have one on the USB stick. Information menu version 1.0. For um, I started off with system. Now I go to scene edit. Here in the scenes, I can choose a lot of stuff for the arranger. I can the chord detect. I actually did not really play with this yet, but maybe you can just read what it says. Scale tuning, this is quite interesting. Default is equal, but it has a lot to choose from. And then I can also say what I want the root tone to be, or the key. Of course, I can choose them all. So I'll put this back. And we have mixer, and here I can choose all the things to mix. So I can control them with this, or I can just press the one under this, and then I can use the scroll wheel. And I guess that was all for this menu. So this is just the home screen when I press the home button. Here I can choose the lower sound patch, the upper sound or patch, and of course these only affect the sound when you press split dual, and then you can choose split mode, and it will nicely say, you see, in the indicator which one I chose, the lower or the upper. I can say dual mode, it will show two of the keyboards, and then again we go to single mode and if i long press split oh nothing most buttons do have a long press this one doesn't so i will put it back to single mode um, i can press settings and here i can adjust a lot of stuff for the lower and upper part separately level pen octave porta etc And this is quite nice. So um, what I used to do when I have some lead sound that is monophonic and I like to, to be polyphonic, I can override this. Now it says tone, so it is just programmed in the patch. It will uh, confirm to that. But I can also, also say it's always polyphonic or monophonic. And you cannot save this with a patch, but you can actually save this in a scene. So if you're careful with the scenes, you can sort of edit your own patches, like you see, maybe also cutoff resonance and a lot of stuff that is actually quite a deep dive into patch editing, at least for a machine like this. Um, so that was settings. Now, normally this is uh, just to choose your sound. And when I press piano, uh, it's very nice. It goes to the piano sounds, but if you long press and hold the piano key, uh, you can uh, just assign any patch to that key. So you always have five sort of quick to choose for and lower and upper. So you have effect six. When I uh, go like this, uh, I, I uh, you see, yeah, I press list. I go to the Categories, categories, and 
I scroll through like this and I quite a lot. And no assign you go to the user space that is left open and I've imported quite a lot of patches so I don't have a lot of left but it's 256 patches you can uh, extra import in this machine. Um, so I just go like this, percussion drums, and now I can scroll and you have here a little indicator who says how much. You see there's a, a not a lot of stack sound, so there's not a lot to scroll on contrary to this one. Yeah, you can see that on the camera also. <laughs> and what is nice, if I press category again, I can just scroll through them like this. Or I can say bank. And now it goes to the presets, common, I don't know what is the difference between this, but okay. Presets go keys, presets common, common drum, and user. And here I can in fact see all the sounds I have just put on it myself. Next stop is song. I go from left to right on the left side of the panel. Song, I have two modes. I have audio mode and MIDI mode. And when I choose audio, you really need uh, a USB stick. And nice about this is you can just press play, uh, of course. <laughs> and if you um, press this one, you can say repeat all, and then it will just repeat and play in sequence all the, the files you have there, or it will repeat the single one, or it won't repeat at all. You can scroll through them like this, which is really nice, I think. You can do overdub. So you can record and it will just like a looper, it will overdub what you play. Uh, of course, you can never exceed the length of the first recording and it will separately um, uh, save all the recordings you've made. So uh, if you have, uh, you played along four times, you have like five tracks, including the first original one. Um, what's a bit confusing, um, it doesn't add to the numbers. What I mean is when I now delete song one, and I have quite a bit here. And when I will now record, it won't record number 26, 27, but it will record one again. So that's a bit confusing in my eyes. Uh, I can also record MIDI. I don't know how to export this. This one, it will just save as WAV files on the USB stick. This is internal. It says also internal. Um, I can play it. I can not overdub. Of course, I can delete. When I play this one and I change the sound, it will change the sound, it is playing. So when I record something in piano and I choose strings, it will just continue playing back, but then in the strings sound, in the strings patch. Uh, I did not mention this one yet. Uh, here, this is kind of uh, a plug. And when I unplug it from the mains uh, power, from the power adapter, it will show a battery so that you always know if you're whether on battery power or you are on mains power and I will release the plug and now you will see it changes to a little battery icon and back so it won't shut off it will just continue doing so um, when i uh, unplug the mains power it will also not shut down it will continue to go on battery power but it doesn't know so now i have uh, disconnected the mains power to the power outlet it will not shut down, it will go on battery power, but the icon will not change. So that's a bit confusing. When you're on stage and someone unplugs it, you won't see it here and it will drain the batteries, but you will never know until it shuts down because the batteries are gone. Next up is the record menu. When I press record, uh, a little uh, red light will start flashing on the record button. I can choose if I want to record audio or MIDI. And when I press, it takes a while at first to switch. Sometimes I thought it didn't recognize my click, but it did. So when I start playing, it will start recording. And when I press record, it will start recording, which is quite nice because you can just overdub and you can choose if you press record and it will just start or you can just start playing and you know you have the first note synchronized with the first note in the uh, previous recording when you're overdubbing. Then there is the chord sequence button. Uh, when I long play it, I will activate it and a little light on the button again will light up. When I just press it, I go into the menu. Here I can say where it's on or off. 
zoom, it will just make the chords bigger to see. Um, list, I can go to a lot of preset like chord patterns. And I can also press tag list. And again bank, like preset, user, like on all the patches. Uh, right, probably I can, uh, I did not play with this yet, so I can probably overwrite it with my own, I guess. Or if I press right, it will go to the user. Uh, initialize and menu, right, chord, edit. Utility. Settings. Measure length, for how many beats, transpose, keyboard analyzer switch. Again, I did not play with this, but it is all in this menu. No, that's it. Ah. Ah, there's a lot to do here. So I will play with that later. Then there's the style button. Again, I did not really play a lot with this, but again here I can choose like in banks where it is now or categories where you can. And there is a lot. You see the little indicator how much there are in one category. So you will not likely run out of styles. Next to the styles button is the mute button. And here, when I have the arranger active, I can mute parts. And when I press enter, I can also adjust the volume of the parts. Next is the effect button. I can long press it uh, to go into settings, the type. I will show you later if it's on or off. A lot of to do there also. Probably you want to see this. What can I choose? Sign, saw, saw. Oh, some left also. Okay, so these ones. And then, where is it? Here. Ah, notch, high pass, band pass, low pass. So, and actually the effects, I've chosen a, a simple patch. Here I can put it on or off. This is what the super filter does. Flanger, flanger, phaser. Ah. Delay. Tape echo. Ooh, ring modulation. Bit shifter, bit crusher, and all these effects I have separate settings. I will not show them all because it will be a really long video. Phonograph, <laughs> nice. Auto pen. And that's it. And then I have one for reverb separately. Here I can uh, choose the send and I can choose the type. Studio, lines, concert hall, cathedral. Then we have the, oh, I will put it off, the arpeggiator. And of course I can put it on and off. And when I long press the arpeggiator button, I will go to the settings. So velocity is real or one value I give it. Grid goes from quarter notes to, yeah, again, a lot to choose. Duration, octave range from zero plus one to three. 
type up, down, up and down, random. So again, on or off. When I press hold, it's quite nice. When I now press... Oh, it's off. When I press uh, a chord, it will just hold the notes and I don't have to hold it with my fingers. So I will do this. You can... Uh, this is the random one. Up and down. Only down and up. Active range. So, you get the idea. Sync, it will sync this to the tempo of the arranger that is running at that time. Or it is separate from that. And what is actually quite nice. Yeah forgot what I wanted to say. I can choose what part to arpeggiate. So I can choose auto and I have no clue <laughs> uh, on what basis uh, on what basis it will make a decision but I can choose auto or I can just use the lower, the upper or I guess uh, in my experience auto choose just both parts. Now it's only the lower, now only the upper. And of course I mean um, these parts. So if I split or whatever, so I can have a layer with two uh, sounds and then I can only arpeggiate one of those or I can use it as split or anyway, whatever I want. Then we have a transpose button. I can just press it and then it will transpose on or off. And if I hold it, I press the middle C, it will go to, oh, it's off anyway. So I have to put it on. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, my bad. So I press and hold it. When I press the middle C, it's off. When I go C sharp, it's plus one. I go D, it's plus two, etc. I can up. I can go down until... Oh, that's crazy. When I go over plus five, it will register as minus. It will just take the next C as a target. So I will put it off. And when I just press it, it will just uh, show what it's doing. Then we have octave, shift, plus or minus, and like uh, you see here, it will give an indicator what it's doing. Also, when it's transposed, you see here, I forgot that. And when what's always nice, when I press octave, plus and minus together, it will just go to zero. Next is the Arranger button. Uh, I can choose all kinds of variations. And I can choose an intro or an ending. And next to the Arranger is the Play and Stop button. And when I play that, it will just start playing. Or And again, there is a little light indicator. Then there's the Tempo button. Wait, I will first go home. So, when I press and hold the tempo button, it will activate the metronome. When I press it, I can just make adjustments on off. Lock again, um, or not again. <laughs> this lock button, it will, um, when you choose a different scene, it will not adjust to the tempo of that scene. So, you can just lock the tempo uh, over scenes you choose. Tap button for the tempo. Always nice. And tempo, pattern. Actually, I don't know what the pattern does. Ah, nice. Now I know. Hmm. That's nice. Pattern off. And oh, I skipped it. So these are these buttons. Uh, here I can also adjust, of course. And settings really nice I can choose the tone click or electronic or voice I can choose the volume volume of the sounds I can choose if there is a downbeat so if it will accentuate or choose another sound for the the first beat of the bar 
and a very nice of Roland. A lot of time signatures to choose from. Just scroll through them so you can see. So I'd say there's very little to wish for in this regard. I guess I forgot to show you, when we are on the home screen, you can adjust the sounds like this, but you can also adjust the sounds like this. And what I would have liked to see is a way to just scroll to the end. Um, something to hold so that it will just go down all the way. But uh, I don't know, maybe it's not there, maybe I just missed it. I don't know, maybe someone else knows. Then there's the scene button. and. What's out with this one? At least uh, I made a little bit of a mistake with this. When you press it and you scroll, it will immediately go to the scene you see under the cursor. So you don't have to actually, uh, do you say, confirm that you want this one, just like the sounds. It will just take that. So if you've just um, uh, took a split point and everything is perfect, you know, and you press scene because you want to uh, save it, you scroll and then actually you have just changed the scene. So what you should do is when you have a scene that you like, split points, everything, just press and hold the scene button and then you can just choose one to save it to. And when I say save, I can also just change the name. I can change the letters that are there and I can say insert an extra letter or delete the letter that's under this. So really nice. QWERTY keyboard would be quicker, but hey, where to put it on this one? So this is a very good alternative. Then next to the uh, scene button is the split dual function, and I already showed that one. Then there's the, wait, yeah, the, oh wait, I put it on split. So there's the mic effects, and that's for the microphone inputs. Of course I can just activated mic effects, voice transformation or harmony. And as far as I know, a harmony, it's not like um, a harmonizer that uh, I can just play any note and it will just uh, make my voice on the same uh, height as the keys I've pressed, the same notes. It doesn't. You still have to uh, change the pitch of your voice. I can have a compressor, I can activate Normal hard soft, and there is noise suppression. It's like a noise gate. It will just shut down when there is not enough signal. And here I can choose. There's various ways how it will uh, add the notes to your voice. How many, and if they're above the original voice or below. And there's a lot of stuff here to set. And that is about it for the mic effects. Then there's the mic. Again, these have a little light, so I can just long press the button to turn it on or turn it off. And then it will uh, uh, lit the little light inside microphone. I can switch it on, I can switch it off. And I just press microphone, I can adjust the levels of the microphone itself and the reverb send it will do. There's no built-in microphone anyways. So I guess that uh, covers all the menus. Uh, I hope this is useful to someone. If it is, please uh, give me a like and or a subscribe. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye.